You got an opportunity here. Give the people someone to hate. The penguin has come to an end, but the question is, did it stick the landing? Hey everyone, welcome to Digital Charcuterie. I'm James, thanks for stopping by. Special shout out to all of our new subscribers and all of you who have joined me watching The Penguin the past few weeks. That has been awesome. I've been loving it and loving the comments with you. If you're new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. We got Batman to talk about, obviously, and so much more. And we're looking to hit 4,000 subscribers. What about us? Eight episodes in, was this one good? Did it end the way we were all hoping to end? I don't even know. I think one thing, you know, it's been a lot of fun to speculate and come up with theories and discuss theories, but one thing you have to do when you get into a show or a movie is kind of check those at the door. And so I did that and I sat down and I watched A Greater Little Thing, episode eight of The Penguin, and I said, what are we going to get? And right off the bat, we get Julian Rush's voice and we see the red light therapy happening and then we get Francis Cobb. But then we get extra young Francis and then we get Francis and we see her past through the eyes of the red light therapy, which I thought was a really cool take on it because we kind of get, again, they did this earlier on with, uh, episode, I think it was like three and four, when you see, you know, the Maroni's taking out Oz and Sophia, and then we get that perspective, the Oz perspective, and then we get Sophia's perspective the next week. This time, we got the other perspective of Frances in her dress going to Monroe's with Oz, right? We saw why that was happening, and it was not so good. It was not so pretty. We got more Rex Calabresi as well, as the photo suggested that they released a few days ago. But again, this wasn't exactly what I was expecting from Rex. I had a few theories that I thought were whatever, but ultimately, we got Francis confiding in Rex. We still don't really know exactly what their relationship was, which was whatever, but she admits to Rex that she believes, that she knows for a fact, because of the flashlight, she knows for a fact that Oz was responsible for the death of her sons, which is absolutely bonkers. But one thing she said was that the devil is living in her house. Now she's not so innocent herself, but she fully admits that her son is the devil. And I thought that was, that was telling, right? That is where we are headed. We are going Oz Cobb is the devil and Batman's gonna have to deal with the devil. That being said, where is Batman? I think we all knew, I think we all suspected what was gonna come from the where is Batman aspect of this show. I think we all kind of had a feeling of where it was gonna flow to and how we we're gonna get there. And we'll get to that in a little bit. From here, Rex though, explains to Francis that she can either utilize Oz's potential, if you will, or basically take him out. And he is essentially offering to wipe out a boy. So who's worse in this situation, Oz or Rex? Everyone in the show is god awful. They go to the club, to Monroe's, and this is, we got a really cool eerie shot of Sophia and Julian kind of just hovering uh, at a table watching over and you see Francis look at them. And it was kind of like this ghost moment and it was, I was like, this is kind of, this is kind of funky, kind of cool. And I like, I like this because we're in a grounded Batman world and yet we still, they still find ways to push that envelope of, of reality, right? Like this, you know, this probably isn't how it would ever happen in real life, but you still feel like it's plausible in this world. And I thought they did a great job of that. And that kind of takes her out of the moment, but she gets reeled back in. And then we find out that Oz says all he wants to do is protect his mother and look after his mother because his mother is the only person on the planet that Oz Cobb actually loves from day one. That's it. Just don't give up on me. This whole series has been kind of about him protecting his mom, right? He told everybody that she died a few years ago. He didn't tell anybody that she, or, and no one knew except for Vic where she lived. He had all, like, she was a massive secret. She meant the world to Oz. And the whole time, he, their whole lives on both ends was this giant lie. He's telling, you know, he's living this lie that he didn't kill his brothers, and she's living this lie knowing that he did, but pretending that he didn't. And that's gonna come to a head and come crashing together because obviously, you know, Look, I don't want to get all philosophical here, but lying is never the answer, kids. What the hell do you even stand for? She obviously decides not to go through with it, otherwise we wouldn't have a show. Now we're at modern day Monroe's and we see Oz is now tied to a chair, a la episode one, when she ties him up, when Sophia ties him up to discuss where Alberto was and his whereabouts during that time and whatnot. And this one's a little bit different because they have Oz's, Oz's mom there. Francis is obviously there, obviously there with them and Oz is in full panic mode, right? Don't touch his mom. The only person that matters to Oz is his mom, and that's, who's, that's who is in danger right now, is his mom. So he can't get out, he's tied up really tight. And then they have a moment, and Sophia gives him, you know, the, the villain monologue kind of story. 
and we go into it. And you know, here's the thing, because you get the trailer for this episode, and then we had the mid-season trailer, you know that Oz is gonna get out of this, right? Because, it's, I mean, you just, obviously you know because he's in the Batman too, but you also know because of the trailers, which kind of ruins things, whatever, that's not a topic for today. So you know, but you're like, how is he gonna get out of this? And then his mom gets up and you're like, oh my gosh, is she telling him a, a sob story and then it's gonna like loosen his, his tape or whatever to get him out? No, she, she breaks a beer bottle and stabs him in the gut. Just stabs Oz in the gut. Full villain mode. Who is the devil, lady? Who is the devil? Full villain mode. Pfft. You can't kill the devil, though. You're the goddamn devil. She then has a vision of her sons, her dead sons, just drenched in water, which I thought another creepy, this one was even creepy, a creepy vision right now. And then she has a stroke. She just crashes to the ground, which gives Oz the anger and rage he needs to escape. And this was, it was a cool shootout moment that we got here. Bang, 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 bang. Obviously the escape, but the best part of all of it was when they, when Oz gets out of Monroe's with his mom, because he's got to save his mom. When he gets out of Monroe's with his mom, you see uh, Marcus Wise, the cop there, just using some drops and they shoot him from behind, right? I think it was right through the eye. Perfect. I it was just perfect, right? Just like, this is a dickhead cop the entire series and they took him out. I was like, yeah, I'm into that. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. It's morbid for me to say that. I get it, but it was fun to see. And in a moment, Sophia pulls out the cigar cutters from a few episodes ago, throws them over at Julian, and is like, you're gonna cut off Francis' hand, hand, Francis' finger, if Oz doesn't tell the truth about killing his brothers. And Oz, being the, the purest liar on earth, cannot be honest. This is why I believe he will be a politician, more on that later. Won't say anything, and they start to cut down on Francis's finger, and Sophia stops. Sophia's not pure evil, she's evil, but she's not penguin level evil. And they stop and they let that go. And that's when Francis gets up and walks over to Oz. Now we get good old boy Vic, Jason Todd, the penguins Vate Jason Todd. In Bizarro world, he's gonna survive, right? Because if you're the Jason Todd to the villain, you would survive if the Jason Todd to the hero would die, right? That makes complete sense, doesn't it? Let's hope that pans out for Vic. This was another crucial scene in, in not just the show, but in Oz's rise to power because now you have Vic talking to the gangs and they're all like, oh, the bliss is gone. Screw you, we don't need you or Oz anymore. Oz is probably dead. We don't want any of this. But you have a moment with Link where Link is like, Know your place, buddy. Know your place. But there's definitely a connection there, and Oz and, and Victor understands that, and there's a little bit of an understanding between the two. And then we have Vic just screaming, crying, not literally, for Oz. He cares dearly for Oz. His new father figure, Victor, cares desperately to make sure that Oz is okay. And the relief he gets when Oz calls him. The relief he gets. You could feel it. <laughs> Flowing through the TV, you're like, ah, oh, he's so happy. They're gonna have a great time in the Batman too. I love the idea that they played that Sophia doesn't want anything to do with her family legacy. She brought that up last week and Julian kind of pushed her towards it. Not necessarily towards that, but towards being a villain, obviously. He pushed her towards it, but now she's like, she has all the heads of the families around. She goes, guess what guys? I'm leaving Gotham. I have zero interest in this. This is my father's crap. I don't want any part of it. Whoever brings me Oz, can take over. And she has them all bought, except Link. Link's got a nice little uh, little uh, comment in the back saying this can't be for real. Obviously it is, and they all go out and they have a plan set in place to capture Oz, and that plan obviously includes Victor, who is tight with Link. While that's going down, Oz decides to visit Councilman Haiti over at City Hall. We have the Bella Real, Mayor Bella Real sign. A lot of mayor imagery going on here. We have Oz doing what he does and manipulating the councilman. He tells him everything he needs to get ahead in the game. Not just councilman ahead in the game, but Oz ahead in the game. In exchange, councilman gives Oz the knowledge he needs to also get ahead in the game. Last week, I found a lot of similarities between the show and that episode with these comics right here, which is Penguin, Pain, and Prejudice. Great read if you haven't read these ones and you like the penguin, check him out. This week reminded me of Earth One. In it, we have Mayor Oswald Cobblepot. 
And when you look at the images of Batman Earth-1, Oz Cobb doesn't look too dissimilar from Colin Farrell's Penguin, and he is mayor. And it's looking like, with this series, he is headed towards being Mayor Oswald Cobblepot, or Oswald Cobb, I suppose you would say. Maybe he'll adapt the name Cobblepot. Who knows? Probably not. But I like this, because this was a play that that I think we kind of theorized early on in the comment section more than anything, and I didn't think it was gonna play out this way just because of who Oz is in this series and in the Batman one, how he is the gangster, right? He's Carmine's right-hand man. He's got too many connections with the mob, with the criminal underworld of Gotham to make a play at being mayor. However, now, the way they position it, they've done such a fantastic job with this character doing a complete 180 surface level 180, obviously underneath. I, I, now I'm like, okay, we have, the Batman movie is all about the mayoral uh, race and, and, and election coming up, right? And the mayor is obviously killed by the Riddler, which is telling, as that seems to be Penguin's sort of plan, not necessarily killing Bella Real, I'm not saying that, but the plan, might, the plan is for him to have power to be the mayor. The mayor aspect of this series is very, very, very specific. Thomas Wayne, mayoral candidate. Bella Real, obviously, the election. Again, I've mentioned this before, I think the Court of Owls are at play here, and I think I think we're, we're being spun in a spider web right now for the Court of Owls. We might not get there for, till another movie or so, but I love where this is going, and I love how this positions Penguin in a position to maybe unknowingly deal with the court. But what a genius play, using everything they've done in this series to indict everybody but Penguin. To have the Maroni and the Falcone war culminating in an explosion that's torn apart Brown's point. Penguin using all of that to his advantage, to his leverage. Just brilliant. Sophia Burns, Falcone Manor, down, just ablaze. And this was the moment she got in the, the limo and it was like, the music's playing, it's like, okay, they're gonna kill her now. This is where she goes and they're gonna wipe out Sophia. And it was fun, it was a fun ride, Sophia. You've been, I think, everybody's favorite TV villain for eight weeks now. We've all loved you, but I guess it's time to say goodbye. We're gonna miss you. We all, I think we would miss her. And you know, and then um, the number twos all turned on the number ones of all the gangs. That sounded weird, but all the number twos turned on the number ones of the gangs. Boom, boom, pop them all out. And in doing so, Oz takes Sophia and says, hey, let's go for a ride. And he drives her around. And during the ride, he kind of explains, like, everybody wants a piece of the pie. Everybody wants to be the top dog. Everybody feels used. And people want that. People want the power. And Oz is going to give them that. And when, and he's telling her this, and I'm like, man, this is a great speech. And then she says, Oswald Cobb, man of the people. And I was like, the writing is brilliant because that's what, you know, you're thinking like, man, they're making him the man of the people. And she's just like, you're the man of the people, aren't you, you dickhead? And he is, and he is. And that's the whole point, right? Mayor Oz Cobb, we're going to get that. We're totally going to get Mayor Oz Cobb or Mayor Elect or something's going to come down where he's going to, you know, vote of no confidence, Bella Real or something. Because even when he sees Bella Real in, in, in City Hall, when you look over, there's a mayor sign right there. Like they really focus on mayor, mayor, mayor. They want you to know this is Oz's play. Oz's whole thing is he wants to take control of Gotham. And you might think from the early episodes that means the underworld, but no, 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 now it means Gotham. The entire Gotham. The underworld, sure, but that's small fries to him, right? He wants something bigger. He wants to be, you know, like Batman Returns Penguin. He wants to be mayor of Gotham so he can control it, oddly enough, legally, but have all the power in the world. After that, Oz finds a place, he takes her out to the water. And we've seen the clip, this shot of, of Sophia from the trailers, and she's just standing there and he puts, he tells her to turn around and he puts the gun to her head. And, and, and the half of me was like, she's going to Arkham because of what we just saw, but the other half is like, well, maybe they're just gonna show blood spill out of her face because, you know, they're not against doing that. And then the cops come, we got Bach shows up and the cops come and they put her away in Arkham. And I was like, yes, put her back in her hell. Put her right back there. And she goes right back to her hell, right back to her hell. And it was great. And it's great because now she's still around. So whether she makes a play in the Batman 2, we did a video on it a little while ago that she was gonna have a big role in the Batman 2. Whether, that, whether or not that happens remains to be seen, obviously, but she can come and play if you do another season or if you wanna do another HBO show about any character, she can be there. Now you have Sofia Gigante in play for the future of this universe. I think that the hardest part of this episode was Oz's mom 
basically is in a vegetable state from the stroke that she suffers with the Louis body. It all kind of comes to a head and she has, and she's just a vegetable and she can't do anything. She's kind of strapped in her body. And she, you know, in episode six, I think it was, she says, you know, if this ever happens to kill me. And Oz now in this moment does the complete opposite and he keeps her alive. So he keeps keeping her alive against her will. And he rushes in to show her the TV and the hospital to show her the TV and how proud she, she's going to be of him. And you see like little boy Oz coming back, right? You see little, little Oz Cobb rushing to his mom to be like, look, ma, I did it. I did everything I said I'd do. I did it. And he can't get that approval from his mother. The approval he's been looking for his entire life, he can't get it from her. And he begs her for it. And it's a no-go. And he can't get it. And the doctors give him the, you know, they tell him what's going on and he can't believe it. And he knows that he will never hear the words he wants to hear from his mom ever in his life. His whole life building, 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 doing everything to hear his mom say how proud she is of him. To give her everything he desired, that she desired, would never come to fruition. Could never happen. And he's devastated. And his best friend in the world, Vic, takes him out. And I have a heart to heart and Victor tells him how he's been here like a family to him. And that's when you realize that family makes you weak, kid. If it wasn't for nothing. And that's when he strangles him to death. Just gut-wrenching strangling. Because I think, you know, when it started, I was talking to my wife a lot before it started. And we're both like, who's, you know, we think they we're going to die and whatever. She goes, I don't know. She didn't think Oz was going to kill his mom, though. She thought something else was going to happen. And when, it ha when that happened, she goes, called it. But he strangles Victor, which I thought I thought was going to be a shot, like he was going to shoot him or something. And he strangles him. And, you, and they focus on Oz a lot and his face. And, and you can see there's a remorse, but he's also relieved. And he takes out the cash out of his wallet and he looks at the driver's license, which was the first time we met him right that, that was our first moment was he took out his driver's license look at his name and he throws it into the river and, and Vic's body just lays there and you realize the number twos took out the number ones Oz can't let that happen to him the driver took out you know the, the, the mobster that was being driven has always been taken out Oz can't let that happen right Oz didn't take Oz wasn't taken out because he put Sophia away Victor can't take Oz out because Oz killed Victor. This is Oz's plan. Oz doesn't care about anything other than his mo mother's words. He needs to hear his mom say that she loves him, she's proud of him, and he wants to give her that penthouse high above the city with looks over everything, which she's gonna get, which she's gonna get. This was the part though, right after this, when we were shuttled into Arkham and we see Sophia in her little cell like we saw her in episode four, which was a fantastic episode. And we see her there and she's and she's defeated once again and she's highly medicated. And Dr. Rush comes in and he starts talking to her. No one's really, she's not really paying attention. Then he hands her a black envelope that's been opened. And he says, uh, and he says, this is from someone named Selena. She says, she's your half sister. And she takes it and she reads it and she smiles. What did it say? I don't know what it said, but I know that they have a history in the comic books, obviously. And I know that they're making a Batman 2 and she might have a big part in Batman 2. And I know that Catwoman left for Bloodhaven at the end of the Batman. And I know that she's going to be in Batman 2, most likely. Something's going to come at play with these two. Selena's mom was killed by the hangman killer. Obviously the same killer that killed Sophia's mother. And Sophia has a little smirk at the end, which I thought was a wonderful touch because you're like, what is happening? And it was very, you know what this was? This was the Joker and Riddler at the end of the Batman. Their little moment together, but without Selena Kyle there, obviously. But it was like that little moment. It was, I thought it was just as effective, maybe even more so. When you have a rogues gallery get together, it is just, that is what Batman is about. I love it. I love that they mentioned Selena Kyle. I love there was a note there. There's a connection. Something is at play, probably in the Batman 2, obviously, where we're going to get more of these two characters. They're going to interact. And I cannot wait. Oz Cobb, Man of the People, Top Hat, Penguin Suit, 
this is my penguin. This is the Burgess Meredith penguin I grew up with. This is Colin Farrell coming to the big time. This is the penguin right here. We get him now. He goes to his penthouse high above Gotham where we see his vegetable state mother just laying there with a single tear rolling down her eye. The one thing she asked Oz to do and he couldn't do it because Oz doesn't care about anything but himself. He only cares about himself. He's like, look, Ma, I did it for you. But the one thing she wanted was to not live this way and he won't even do that and now she's stuck in her body high above gotham looking out probably at the bat signal every night to show how even more demented oz can be as he goes down and he has a dance with eve with his girlfriend eve no discussion of the past or anything and we have this and she's dressed as francis was that fateful night at monroe's when she wanted to have rex calabresi take out oz but decided against it and they talk, and Eve tells Oz everything he wants to hear. And you realize in this moment that, yeah, why would she go back to him when she knows that he hid the truth about the hangman killer? But then you realize their relationship is, is fake. There's nothing there. It's a transactional relationship. He pays her to get what he wants, and she takes the money. And that's all it is. Or she's clayface. And as Oz and Eve dance the way that Oz and Francis dance at Monroe's. We're taken out into the snowy streets of Gotham and we sit there for a moment and then the bat signal pops up and it's like, let's go, let's go. And then it ends. And now we gotta wait two years <laughs> or a year, 2026, what year is it? We gotta wait. So we'll get there at some point, but I love what they've done. They fleshed out the penguin. There's all this baggage within the penguin now. His mom tried to have him killed. He kind of averted that. His mom hates him. His mom is a vegetable. <laughs> like, like, There's a lot going on. I love the look of it though. The last shot actually, it felt to me like an homage almost to Batman Returns Penguin. The way it came out, it was winter time. Obviously Batman Returns may or may not be a Christmas movie. It came out and we saw that. Just the, the way it looked and felt, it kind of reminded me of Batman Returns. And again, with the snow with the ice with us being in December and Batman 2 going to play very quickly after this movie ends. Could we have a realistic Mr. Freeze in the Batman 2? I like Court of Owls obviously, but Court of Owls can play in with Mr. Freeze and if you do three of them, maybe you bring in the court and the third one, whatever. But Hush is obviously a play, but Mr. Freeze, I, there was a few times when I thought of, I actually just thought of Mr. Freeze watching it. Just thought of it. Because if you're going to have a grounded freeze, winter would be the time to do it. I don't know if that's going to be the case. Obviously, again, you know, there's different ways. There was a few theories on some of the comments I saw that were very intriguing about Mr. Freeze, but I kind of went in that direction. I thought, oh, maybe, maybe we'll go there. Maybe, maybe we'll get that in, in, in the next movie. But this, I thought this was just showing Oz from like Carmine's right-hand guy to potential political leader. I thought I did a great job. And they didn't even do the political stuff until now, right? I mean, they set it up a little bit a couple episodes ago, but just now, right? When Vic is like, you brought the power back on. You put the power back on. It was you, Oz. He's like, Oz is like, I can be this guy that I want to be. And you see, like, Oz, you know, this whole show, he's been like, you know, him and his mom especially, but, but they've been like, they want to live the extravagant life and they never have. So they, they believe in all the cheap stuff. And... And now he can get to that point that he wants. So he's dressing the part, right? He, he's looking the part. He's still that mobster gangster, the guy who killed his brother. He's still that guy. But his facade is everything he ever wanted. And it's almost real. His facade has almost become real. I love this episode. I love this series. I would give it a 5 out of 10, IGN. No, I thought it was great. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me every week to talk Penguin. It's been a blast. Like I said, we're going to talk about more stuff going down the road. If there's anything you'd like to hear me talk about, let me know in the comments down below and we'll do more series on more shows, more movies, whatever it is. I love doing this. I love communicating with you all. It's so much fun. And that's a wrap on The Penguin. Oswald Cobb, man of the people. Thanks everybody for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.